In this video, I want to do an example using Newton's second law. And so what I have here is a uh, shuttle. I have this green, this is a steel beam, uh, and this object here is a little uh, steel shuttle that slides along this uh, green beam. It's being pulled by a, uh, a wire that has some tension in the wire as it slides along the uh, steel beam. The, I have some some numbers over here. We've got a mass of uh, 0.8 kilograms. There's a 20 newton force in the wire. It uh, is at an uh, angle of 45 degrees with a coefficient of friction of 3 fifths of uh, 0.6. So we want to know what is A on this object. Okay, so we're our first step, choose an object. And there's really only sort of one object here uh, relevant. And so that's the uh, the shuttle. And so we want to know the forces on that object. So there's going to be the force of gravity. Uh, there's going to be this uh, wire providing a tension force. There's also a contact force here between the beam and the shuttle. And since it's going to be sliding with friction, uh, I think we'd want to divide that contact force um, into a normal component and then a frictional component. So F sub F, friction. Okay. And so uh, the next thing then is, we have those look like all the forces, those are the only objects in contact, the, the wire and the beam and then gravity. So let's go ahead and, and look at a free body diagram and see what that does. All right, so gravity is uh, down. Uh, the tension then is is coming off here at an angle of uh, 45 degrees. So I might draw some parallel and perpendicular axes here. So that's theta. It's 45 degrees. The object is is clearly moving uh, along to the to the right. And so the, the coefficient of kinetic friction is going to be in the direction opposite the motion of the object relative to the agent. And so that will be uh, towards the left. And then we want to know uh, now the normal force. I'm going to pause here for a moment and say that about 95% of all of my students that confront this problem, when they get to this stage, they put the normal force up because pretty much every object they've encountered so far has a, a object sitting here uh, on some uh, on some agent. It has a normal force up opposing its force due to gravity. Um, but is that what's happening here? So if we just look at some of this, uh, the force due to what is the magnitude of the force due to gravity? So that's a uh, 0.6 kilograms. If g is is 10, uh, we're looking at a force due to gravity of a, of about eight newtons. But what about the tension force? So there's then this the the uh, vertical component, the y component. If if this is the y direction, we might have a coordinate system plus x and plus y. So the y component of the tension force is is say ten t. Uh, sine theta, theta is 45 degrees, sine th of 45 degrees is 1 over the square root of 2, tension is 20 newtons, and so the the y component of the tension force is a, is about uh, uh, 20 over the square root of 2, which is about 15, somewhere 14, 15, uh, greater than 8. So if the vertical component of the tension force is greater than gravity, if the normal force also points in the positive y direction, we're going to have a net force in the positive y direction. It will accelerate. But this is clearly not accelerating in the y dimension. It's accelerating along the x. So so what is going on? And, and so the problem was uh, we need to go back to the visualization step. So what what's going on here? Let's go back and take a close look of what's happening in our uh, for our shuttle. If we look at this head on, so here's now the the shuttle's coming out of the screen at me. Here's the beam. And this shuttle then is is, you know, surrounds 
this beam, it rides on it here. And so, um, where is the contact between the shuttle and the beam? Now, if it were just resting on there, if it were just at rest, it would rest on the beam with, with the, uh, uh, in contact here, and then the normal force would point um, perpendicular to the surface from the agent, which is the beam, to the object, which is the shuttle, which is in that direction. But that, that's not what's happening here. What we have is tension of a wire pulling it up with a greater force than uh, gravity, this is tension, which is a greater force than gravity pulling it down. So what's really happening, I'm gonna, if I erase my picture, because of that wire, get another picture here. So here's my beam. And so here's my my shuttle is here it's right it is uh in contact the contact point is here because the tension in the wire is pulling the shuttle uh up and so with the contact here the normal force acts perpendicular to the surfaces in the direction from the agent to the object. That's our model of the contact force. And so that gives us a normal force down because the agent is the, is the beam and the object is the shuttle and the point of contact is on the lower part of the beam. Okay, so that's one way I, the reason I wanted to do this problem is because it highlights how critical uh, the visualization step is, but also how critical that at every point in solving the problem you think about what's really going on in the problem and check to make sure that what you're doing makes sense. I didn't immediately assign my normal force up because I immediately thought, wait a minute, there, there can't be any acceleration in the y-axis and without any acceleration in the y, if my normal force was up, then my forces uh, would be unbalanced. And so that sort of logical reasoning is, and keep going back to your picture in the visualization is, is critical through, through all of these problems. All right. But now that I think I have a, uh, um, a reasonable uh, uh, set of forces in a free body diagram, I can go ahead and sum my forces. So my tension is equal to the uh, the x component, the magnitude of the x component, which is t cosine theta. And we always just said that cos that because theta, theta is 45 degrees, I know that cosine of 45 is equal to sine 45 is equal to one over the square root of two. I here's one where I just put square root of two in. See, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, don't plug in your values to the end. Yeah, I, 99% of the time I, I follow that. Sometimes if I'm, uh, if I think it simplifies the problem greatly, I might do something like this. All right, so the, the y component of, of the uh, tension force is, is the, uh, is there. And that's the magnitude of the tension times um, sine of 45 degrees, which is also 1 over the square root of 2, and in both cases, they're pointing in the positive uh, directions. All right, so next we have the force due to gravity. It has nothing in the y, and it has its entire magnitude, which is mass times gravity. Uh, sorry, nothing in the x. Its entire magnitude is along the y direction, has a magnitude mass times the acceleration due to gravity. <laughs> I underlined it, and it looked like a plus minus there. Um, and it's in the negative y direction. Okay. Always go back to your picture to determine signs. The force due to friction has its entire magnitude, which is the coefficient of friction times the normal force in along the x-axis, 
and it's in the negative x direction plus zero y. And then finally we have the normal force which has nothing along the x and its entire magnitude along the y-axis and from the diagram negative y. Now this vector sum of all of these forces is the mass of the shuttle times its acceleration and we know that that's entirely along the x-axis. So that gives us uh, two uh, relationships we can work with. I don't know why I put minus zero. <laughs> it's minus zero. Uh, I think I just lost the my my pen didn't make the the other mark there. Okay, a pen. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll blame it on pen malfunction. Okay, so that gives me uh, there are two relationships in the y axis. We have um, t over the square root of two minus mg minus n is equal to zero. And then the x, we have uh, t over the square root of two minus mu sub n, uh, nor mu times a normal force is equal to the mass of the shuttle times the acceleration. So uh, I have two unknowns, the normal force and the acceleration. So I can solve. I think how I'll solve this is um, I'll take this and solve for n. This gives me n is equal to uh, mg minus t over the square root of 2. And then substitute that in here. And so that gives me t, whoop, t over the square root of 2 minus mu times mg minus t over the square root of 2 is equal to mass times the acceleration. Uh, before I do anything, I'm going to simplify this. This gives me uh, t. Yep, so uh, hopefully you caught that. You have to do your algebra correctly. Uh, from here to here, I lost a minus sign. If this is minus n, I bring that to the other side for positive n. So then positive the positive n then is equal to negative mg plus t over the square root of 2. Okay, so now I can substitute that back into here where I get this is negative and that's positive t over the square root of 2. Okay, yeah, well, sine errors plague us all. t over the square root of 2 uh, minus, then plus mu mg minus mu t over the square root of 2 is equal to ma. I'm going to combine my terms here, factor out a t over the square root of 2, uh, 1 minus mu uh, plus mu mg is equal to ma. And then I s divide by m, and then I get my final relationship. A is equal to this factor, tension over the square root of 2m, 1 minus mu, then uh, plus mu g. And so now I can look at it, and that's one of the nice things about uh, waiting to the end, is you decrease the, the number of uh, uh, calculation errors you make by saving, plugging, plugging in your numbers till the end, and then you can look at your expression to see that it makes sense. As mu increases uh, to one, this this decreases, and um, uh, and so you lose the the impact of your of your tension. Um, and so the mass increases, the acceleration goes down. Tension increases, acceleration goes up. From what I can tell, this this sort of makes some sense. It's a kind of complicated function of of mu, but it may on the uh, um, the other degree it makes sense. Here, what 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 can I say about this? What this is telling me is that um, right now, the larger the gravitational force. See, the gravitational force 
helps decrease the amount of the uh, normal force there is for a given tension. So if the tension stays the same and, and this had a larger mass, the gravitational force would be greater, which means the normal force would go down. And with the normal force going down, it decreases the effect of friction. So what this term tells us is, is, that, is that the larger that the mass is, this, this term decreases the effect of the frictional force, with, which helps increase the acceleration. So that's, that's, that's interesting too here, and, uh, um, and so that, that's, uh, it's good to try to understand where all these, all these terms then come from. And so then, just check, I'm not going to, to, uh, to do the arithmetic, but this is about 13 meters per second squared once we plug in the numbers. So what the, the key to this, I again sort of highlight not plugging your numbers till the end. Uh, also, <laughs> we all make sign errors, um, but how critical it is is on the visualization to make sure you can visualize everything clearly because that has uh, important on, on how we apply things like the contact force model and we would have gotten it wrong putting the normal force in the in the uh, positive y direction on the free body diagram and how important it is at every step in the way to check do, does what I'm doing make physical sense.